area of divine news or good news of God. You are the angel that carries the good news of Jesus. The angel that is coming from heaven that the Bible will qualify where that angel is coming from. That angel is coming with a message from God. You as an angel, you have the angel carrying the good news, a message of Christ to the world. You know, some Christians are waiting for the for Jesus to send an angel from heaven to come and do certain things for them. That they are forgotten. According to the last chapter of Matthew, that Jesus told us to go and preach to the whole world. Jesus deputized us to make him, make us his angels, to make us his servants, that he has sent us. But we said, no, 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 Jesus. Can you send an angel, someone from above, to come and help us and do this? You remember when the man and Lazarus was in the pit. And Lazarus was in paradise. And the rich man was tormented and he was tormented like nobody business. The Bible says he asked Jesus, can you send an angel up there to tell my brother that this tormented area is true and it is exist. And Jesus said, why? There are prophets and teachers there. Can your brothers listen to them? Corinthians is not talking about angel with a flapping wings. He's talking about the church leader. Because at that time, let me now walk you into the culture now. At that time, a woman without covering her hair, put it this way. If the woman was walking outside in her bikini, but her hair was covered, it could have been accepted because they have a problem with the hair of a woman, not the dress of the woman. But this is why they are making big deal out of the hair. So you can come in with your bikini, but make sure your hair is covered. At that, at that particular dispensation, not in that culture, when a woman have the hair exposed, it is the same as somebody walking into your church with a joker pants on or with a bikini on. Like somebody going to the beach and sitting in the church with all those Interesting things out there. So when they see the hair of a woman, in their mind, it's already something that your husband is the only person to see your hair. This is one of the reasons why it has gotten to a point that some cultures and some Islamic religion. They make it, they take it to a next level that you cannot even see the face of the woman. The woman have to be hidden behind the burqa. Covered in some black attire, black garb. With only two holes like a ninja. Available. Now you look at the whole thing and you look at it carefully, you realize that it's not the limitation of the woman, but it's the deficiencies in the man. Because if I see some woman with the hair on, ooh, ooh, that was the culture then. But I, this is what I say. The how I judge things according to the scripture is what will Jesus do. 
So I look up to Jesus and I don't look up to any man. I look up to Jesus and I don't look up to any man. Let's go to the gospel according to Luke chapter 7. Now, before even we go there, before even we go there, I want you to pay attention to who you serve. You see, Christianity is not a religion. I told you I'm teaching today. I'm going slowly because this is a very controversial topic and subject that I want you to be versed. And I want you to point your eyes not to the shiny dangling object but to the concrete established gospel of Christ. Not any other ways of man. Go to go together with me to Luke chapter 7. I always tell you what would Jesus do? Luke chapter 7. And go to verse 38. Now Luke chapter 7 verse 37 and 38. And we'll read. Amen. You remember I asked you what would Jesus do? If it is good enough for Jesus. Then it's good enough for you. Because you see. When you say you are a Christian. You are not Christian because of your pastor. You are a Christian because you have met Christ. You have relationship with Jesus, the son of the living God. So the Bible says we look only to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means that everything that you do, you have to run with Jesus. If Jesus says he's good, then he's good for you. Because that he is the authority of all things. Hallelujah. I wish I knew all these things, but I thank the Spirit of God for the humility and the grace. giving me the chance to go through it all in order to see the light. Amen. Luke chapter 7. I want us to read from verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. Now pay attention to this carefully. He says, a woman in the city, and that woman was a sinner. In other words, Almost everyone in the city had already judged the woman and they have given her the status or a badge of a sinner. In other words, this woman was very famous in the city. 
Every other person in the city knows about. As soon as she entered the into the city, maybe her photo was there hanging somewhere. So you come to the city, you get have to know that woman first before you know the mayor or the governor or the high priest of the city. The woman was is in the city, and that woman was a sinner. And when he knew, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, the woman brought an alabaster box of ointment. The sinner brought an alabaster box of ointment. And those who call themselves not sinners could only stand there and judge because she is a sinner. <coughs> Sorry. And I want to tell you one of the reasons why they assumed that the woman was a sinner was this woman was not following the culture according to the letter. So she was loose with the culture. How do I know? Because in that dispensation, if a woman allow her hair to come out, it's either the woman was a prostitute or a dishonorable woman. But it only have the understanding of a sexual connotation. And yet that woman brought an alabaster box of ointment. It's like you went to a Gucci and you got a box of Gucci. And in that box full of ointment, gradient ointment. I mean, some very expensive stuff. Very, very expensive stuff. That the woman that we call her sinner brought it. Go to the churches nowadays, people standing by the door and they are judging people who are coming to the church based on the way they are dressed, telling themselves, if that woman has not covered her hair, I do not care what is bringing to God. I don't want to see her in the church. They become so holy that they judge everybody as sinners. Just by seeing them with their, with their eyes. Verse 38. The gospel according to Luke chapter 7 verse 38. And stood at his, at his feet behind him weeping. So the woman came to Jesus. With the alabaster box of ointment. Verse 38, and stood at Jesus' feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears. Now pay attention. This is a whole new level of, whole, whole new level. It's a whole new level. The woman began to wash the feet of Jesus with her tears. Hallelujah. The Bible says that woman used her hair and did wipe them with the hairs of her hair and kissed his feet and anointed them. Anointed them. Now pay attention. Do you remember that in Corinthians they were making big deal of the hair of the woman? Because the woman is able to expose her hair automatically, she has been perceived to be what? A sinner. 
Maybe she was doing other business here and there. But the Bible says the woman used her hair, exposed her hair in front of everyone, and wiped the feet of Jesus with that hair. Are you telling me that what that woman did was not prayer? Is that what you're telling me? That what that woman did was not acceptable before Jesus. Are you telling me that there is any better prayer than this woman's prayer under the feet of Jesus? People over there perceive the woman to be the most sinful character ever. But at the feet of Jesus, she was not judged because of her hair. She was judged by Jesus because of her heart. And her heart gave her the chance to have favor before Jesus. Men judge the woman because she was washing and wiping the feet of Jesus with her hair. Corinthians says that, that the glory of the every woman is the hair. Now, the woman took her glory to wipe the feet of Jesus. This is the best ever prayer that any time I look at the scripture and I see this and I tell Jesus, Jesus, give me the strength. Give us the strength to humble ourselves enough for us to see that you deserve it all and you are worthy of it all. She came and gave everything. Not only her riches, not only her hard and money, but she gave it all, including her glory, her respect, her honor, because she understood that she was nothing without Jesus. The culture judged that woman. Because she exposed her hair. But Jesus had a new daughter. Because her heart was close to him. Don't get this thing twisted, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot say that you hate potato. But you eat potato chips. You cannot say you are not you are allergic to peanuts. You like peanut butter. The same hair. One was judged between men and they found it not acceptable. One was judged before Christ. And that was found acceptable. Because the relationship with Christ is not your hair. Relationship with Christ is not what you eat. Relationship with Christ is the obedience to follow him.
came to him. The woman came and bowed before him. Washed his feet. And he kissed. woman was speaking to Jesus in the spirit. You have to be at the same spiritual wavelength to understand things that matters. Things of God and things of man and culture. And anybody who tells you that the judgment of man and culture is higher than the judgment of Christ and his word. It's either confused, ignorant, or both. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name for your word. Thank you, the Lord, today. We have come before.